Hey everyone, Matt here, Big Red Liquors, and today I am tasting the Hennessy Richard, and this is the top of the line for this ubiquitous uh, luxury cognac brand. So this is um, this is as good as it gets for the Hennessy lineup, which is saying a lot. Um, so named after the founder of the brand, uh, the youngest cognacs in this, or the youngest eau de vie in this blend are 50 years old, some of the oldest from 1890s. So if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking to taste something that predates um, flight, then this would be the cognac for you. Uh, and I'm gonna give my tasting notes here and talk a little bit about why do these luxury products exist and what are they for and what's a fair way to judge them. Uh, obviously when you're, when you're pouring this for someone, or you're buying them a drink or you're gifting them a bottle, whatever it may be, um, you're gifting them more than just the liquid, more than just the bottle. You're giving them uh, a, a confirmation of, of their effort. Uh, you're giving them the history of the brand, the history of the company, the history of the people who have worked there forever. Uh, you're, you're really gifting them uh, 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 something that represents lots more than just the liquid in the bottle, okay? And I believe that. Um, you also, when you do a comparison here, this is a, a $5,000 bottle of, of cognac. Uh, it's the sort of highest in its class for luxury good items. But when you look at, um, you look at other categories like cars, you, you know, a couple million dollars for a Bugatti or a Bentley or a Rolls Royce or whatever it may be, um, you know that it's a that's a whole nother level here and obviously that's um that's who some of this is made for to be perfectly honest so when you're evaluating the liquid in the bottle you have to think about all that um, because when you taste it um just like anything it, it's you know taste is so intensely subjective and it's uh it's also part of Part of everyday life so some things that taste good one day may may not taste good the the next day it's so ethereal in a way um, that it's not really a good barometer you can't tr you can't trust it all the time um, so you have to kind of get that out of your mind if you taste this and go, oh it tastes like five thousand dollars that's not the way to look at it you want to enjoy it for what it is um, and to really fully enjoy it you have to kind of put that out of your mind um, because if you if you base all your pleasure on how much something costs, just like anything in life, then I don't think that's the best way to maximize your pleasure. So that being said, I'm going to smell it. I'm going to taste it and let you know what I think. So on the nose, extremely floral. Um, you do get like some candied fruits and some candy notes for sure. Um, you do get like a little hint of, of crystallized ginger. Um, I also get like this little touch of, uh, of like confetti cake and cake batter. And then you do get a slight nuttiness and almost an anticipation of a warming spice to it as well. So again, really beautiful on the nose very elegant. There's not, and I think one of the challenges for someone who's trying to put a blend like this together is that when somebody buys a bottle, you want to be able to go back to it time and time again. You want to really be able to taste new and different things and smell new things each time you come back to it um, because you want a level of complexity um, that is more than your normal spirit. Okay, let's try it. Mm. Mm. Very, very light entry, very floral entry, but then, boom, that, that mid palate and finish is just so much fruit, nut, so much concentration. Um, there's a walnut there. There's sort of an, um, there's like a, there's an antique leather component, like, uh, like a high-end antique store with flowers in it. Um, there's an orange, 
There's a little bit of like a candied orange. There's that wood spice, but it's so light and it's so elegant. It's really amazing that it's really amazing that with some of the older expressions of eau de vie that are in here, um, that it that it maintains that depthness, that depth, that richness, that concentration, but still fresh, still youthful, still delicious and easy to drink. This is not um, it's not intellectual, but it. <laughs> It's certainly very complex and still very tasty, just right off the bat. So, um, you know, does it does it live up to the price point? Again, I don't think that's how you look at it. The price point is for other people, but for just you, for just personal enjoyment, um, if it's if this is something in your price range, uh, this this uh, this cognac certainly delivers the goods, as you can well imagine. Uh, so. That's the Hennessy Richard. I think most of this is heading to private collectors. A lot of it's going to China. There are a handful of bottles left in our market, and I don't think we're going to be getting any more. So this is your chance. So if you've got if you've got forty two hundred dollars and you're interested in in uh, in what this has to offer, uh, we've got it. Cheers.